the land on the other side of Lakeside Avenue here. And um, it is a vision of a, a new neighborhood that would have hundreds of new homes and jobs and that will um, take what is currently and has been for many years an underutilized parking lot and, and turn it into a vibrant New Burlington neighborhood. We've been working to the, towards this goal since the end of 2021 when uh, we announced a housing action plan that had 10 steps to it. This was one of them. And um, the we have uh, achieved some significant milestones um, on the road towards this vision already, most significantly last summer when in July, new zoning was approved for 84 acres of of the south end and it was the it was zoning that did a number of things and we can, can get into some of the details but the uh, probably the most consequential element of it is it legalized housing in the south end for the first time in decades um, what we have been doing since is working with the partners who are are here at the table with us today, Champlain College um, <clears throat> and Ride Your Bike, which is uh, uh, maybe John and we Todd can, 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 can explain really uh, uh, what it is, but it is many of, the, many of the, the people that have been behind the incredibly successful Hula development um, ha have, um, are, are at the table as well. And the reason it's these three parties is because each of the us owns a significant parcel of land in in this area that can become the south end innovation district so we have sort of moved from the city's role as a regulator and, and putting the zoning in place that would make a new neighborhood possible to now the city's at the table because we are um, a property owner and because there will also need to be very substantial infrastructure work that will need to play, take place in public infrastructure for this uh, this vision to become a, a reality. Um, the On Monday, um, the council will have before it what a um, pre-development uh, we're kind of a pre-development agreement, or are we moved so a pre, a pre-development agreement between the three parties that will, at a high level, um, uh, commit the three parties to attempting to create a master plan for what um, what this neighbor how, what this neighborhood would look like, how it would be laid out. It um, commits us to attempting to figure out these these infrastructure issues as well as to do transportation planning. In a moment. Um, Megan and Samantha um, will walk you through some some of the details of what is is in this pre-development agreement. Um, I think it's important to say what this doesn't do. It, it is uh, it does not um, lock in um, any uh, kind of agreement terms at this point. What it does is um, set that vision of where we're trying to get to and lay out. Uh, goals for for the for all the parties, including um, my successor, if she chooses to to continue to um, uh, pursue these goals, uh, it, it lays out a, a framework and process for how they could be achieved. If this works, and it, at this point we have to acknowledge it's a, it's an if, um, it will create a neighborhood that is greater than the sum of its parts of what it would be if we each tried to just develop our, our individual parcels. Um, and it would be another major step towards the goal we have been working for for years of making good on the promise that housing should be a human right here in Burlington. If this effort succeeds, it will create new homes comparable to the number that are being built at Cambrian Rise, perhaps even more. So with that, um, I wanted to, to turn over the microphone, and I'll pass them over here in a moment, uh, to, to Nick Anderson, a former member of the city team who for a number of years now has been playing a leadership role at Champlain College. And uh, Nick, you want to share your perspective? Thanks, Mark. 
Thanks, Mario. Yeah, so I'm Nick Anderson. I'm the AVP of Planning and Operations at Champlain College. And Champlain College is, is one of those players that have a, a key asset in this institutional district. And um, Champlain College can, you know, sees itself as being the, the educational anchor for this part of town, for this uh, South End Innovation District. So <clears throat> a true mixed-use district is, is all about people being able to live, work, and play, um, all in, in kind of close proximity to their home. Um, we like to add a couple of things to that, live, work, play, learn, and intern. Um, <laughs> so, you know, looking at, at this area as being a key um, piece for Champlain College to to you know, improve our, our educational outcomes for our students and also um, provide some direct connection for internships and um, career opportunity uh, within this district where it's just going to get better and better um, in terms of our partnership with Hula, um, but partnership with new and innovative businesses that come up through this institutional zone. Awesome. Great. Now I'll pass things over to... John and, and Todd and um, the, the biggest property owner in this partnership is the Ride Your Bike Parcel and um, really much of the driving uh, energy to try to pursue this together has come come from you and uh, we're excited to be sitting yep. here with you today and excited about where this, this partnership could go. Uh, Todd Sarandos and I represent um, the ownership entity at uh, 125 Lakeside Avenue, which is Ride Your Bike. It used to have another word in there. And I, the owner, uh, Russ Scully, um, uh, couldn't believe that he was buying a six acre parking lot. And his <laughs> was like, you got to ride your bike. And so that, that was the, the genesis of the name. But uh, we're happy to be here um, with uh, the city staff, with Champlain College staff and with the mayor um, that, uh, you know, you, you must be reading my mail. Um, you know, that I, I was just pr preparing comments, was used the word milestone in connection to uh, Monday night's action and that it, it transforms a transitions, an idea into a framework in broad strokes. The idea is how does a big town in a small rural state transition to being a contemporary urban city and and in doing so how do, how how do you how does it do that um, in a way that um, you know fulfills some community goals M more immediately is and I understand, how do you how do you transition how do you convert 12 plus acres of surface parking lots into you know vibrant mixed-use neighborhoods in a way that satisfies goals like economic development, especially in a part of the city that's been the employment engine of, of the city of Burlington. Um, you know, but, you know, and speaking just from Ride Your Bike's perspective, you know, our primary motivation was how can we support the job creation that's occurred at Hula, uh, you know, by creating walk-to-work conveniently located housing. Think of it as, as the 21st century version of the lakeside neighborhood in the proximity to the mill, you know, that, so, so you know, that's kind of, you know, from, from our perspective, what, what's driving this. But it's not really about just us. I mean, there's, um, I think we can broaden the, the term of innovation to include, you know, education, makers, um, cultural, um, amenities. So, you know, we've got an opportunity here to do this in a big way, but it's not just about, we have to balance that interest also with just an incredible need for housing. Lots of housing, all sorts of housing across the income ranges. And so that's, that's something that is, you know, we're also, you know, committed to. And then finally, I think that the third goal is, 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 whatever improvements we make to the built environment have to be done in such a way that we're being sustainable, that we're being smart, you know, that we can't be nostalgic. You know, we have to be, this has to be a contemporary effort. Um, it, it can't be, um, we, we, we can respect the past, but we really have to embrace the future and technologies and everything that that, that means. So anyway, so that's that's the idea, that's and and the goals behind the idea. The pre-dev is is a framework. It it allows us to, 
to move forward and do the work, you know, that will really kind of result in in a unified development plan. And that unified development plan, I, I, you know, took the words, uh, I was thinking the same thing. It's we have the opportunity to have an outcome that exceeds the sum of the parts. So, you know, I think the, the three parties, um, um, you know, have similar interests, not identical interests. You know, Champlain College and the city have been at this for, they have a very long range view. Private interests tend to be perhaps a shorter horizon. However, I think in our case, that, that, my horizon's only like three weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? Right. Um, so that, so it, it's, you know, we're, we're, you know, we, I think we, there's a lot of shared things that can make this happen. But despite all our good efforts and intentions, there's not a guarantee that we're going to get there. Um, but one thing we, we can be sure of, this transition is happening whether we acknowledge it or not, and those parking lots are going to be converted whether or not we come up with a unified uh, plan. But of the fact that we're, we're collaborating and listening to each other, I think, you know, I think is, is, a, is a really good sign, so. Great. Yeah. Todd, you wanna add anything to that? I just wanna add that um, part of what's happening with this development and part of our objective is to create this neighborhood on this large piece of land, 13 acres. It's, it's quite an opportunity and I think really important for us is to create a permeable neighborhood that really interacts with the existing Pine Street corridor, the rest of the South End. It is not to create a walled off development. So um, it's, it's become working together. We've, we've kind of realized that we really need to integrate this development into the whole South End. So that's a, it's a really important piece of this project. Awesome. So um, here's here's what I think we're going to do it now is um, we're going to move the mics in a second over to our planning director, Megan Tuttle, and our assistant director within CEDO for, for community work, Samantha Dunn, who have been the city leads on this project. And they will walk you through a PowerPoint, some of which uh, people who were at the council meeting last week, you will have seen before. But I think now that it's getting ready for action, you're going to be reporting on it. Um, it's a good review of exactly you know, what, what is in this pre-development agreement. And um, we'll get out of the way so you can see the screen as they do the walkthrough and then come back up here uh, for, for questions uh, after that. So, great. And then for anyone who's interested, uh, I'm going to walk with, I, I think all, these, all of us are going to go kind of walk the site if people want to get some, uh, you know, understand exactly the parcel we're talking about here uh, in person. All right. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thanks to the partners. Um, they provided a lot of really great background about the history of the work that we've been doing here together in the South End. Uh, want to acknowledge also that there are other members of the city team here, Charles Dillard in particular from our office, that's been really instrumental in this work. Um, the work that we've been doing so far, uh, not only to develop and help the council consider the zoning, the South End Innovation District zoning that the mayor mentioned, has also included and been complemented by collaborative planning work that we as a group of partners have been doing um, under an MOU that was agreed to last year. Uh, that included three phases, the first of which included a, a, a more detailed assessment of the 13 acres in the middle of this district that we've been talking about and coming together to create different development scenarios for those sites that would help us think collectively about our properties in the South End and think about them from the perspective of housing, economic development, transportation infrastructure, and open space, um, as well as the kind of subsurface infrastructure. We've used that iterative planning process to come up with a framework. You've heard many people mention that we have been analyzing in terms of its impact on things like transportation and parking and wastewater and stormwater in particular and used all of that work together then to develop the outlines of this pre-development agreement, um, which uh, really reflects a lot of the work that has been done to date and tees us up for future and further study topics that will follow. On the next slide, those things are outlined here. Um, the uh, the pre-development agreement has um, 
reflects the four sort of outcomes of the work that we've done to date. One is a mobility framework that foregrounds active mobility and accessibility of the district, includes a conceptual development framework for around 1,100 units of housing that could be developed across these sites, and also identifies some targets for wastewater, parking, and transportation that we will use to continue to plan around in the future. Um, and this is, as uh, Megan mentioned, uh, one of the first things was a, a mobility framework. This is a graphic representation of that um, framework with Lakeside Avenue at the top and Sears Lane at the bottom um, and Pine Street all the way to the right and the railroad tracks to the left. Um, so this framework is imagining um, certainly the new Champlain Parkway and then um, the, the additional streets that are gonna be required for that integration that Todd mentioned um, both across this neighborhood and, and outside of the neighborhood into the existing um, neighborhoods in the South End. On the left, you see sort of primary uh, vehicular transportation, and then on the right, the primary uh, pedestrian um, paths. Uh, as you can see, there's a, a street that runs sort of through the middle of, of the 13 acres that is right now anticipated to be primarily for uh, pedestrians. So there would be restricted um, vehicular use, starting to think, um, as John mentioned, how do we create this neighborhood of the 21st century um, that's car light it's not it's not it's not the neighborhood um, that was built a hundred years ago and and making sure we're uh, learning from from everything that we can in the past and understanding what the future um, will need of this neighborhood um, the other um, piece that came into this was a conceptual development program. This is still a preliminary conceptual program. We do not know exactly how many homes or how many square feet of um, non-residential space or how many parking spaces there will be on the site, but we did need to come up with a conceptual program in order to be able to do the infrastructure analyses required for us to understand where the challenges and opportunities were. Um, and so that this is sort of this 1,100 homes that we think is probably the minimum that will the site will hold is a very exciting um, number and as john mentioned um, this one of the things that um, is in the pre-development agreement is a development of a, a housing plan um, where, which will bring in additional partners in addition to the ones um, that are signing on to the pre-development agreement um, to help us understand how we're best going to achieve um, affordable housing um, housing for the the missing middle um, that we sometimes call in burlington is at market rate housing home ownership, rental, all the different types of housing that we know are needed in the city. Um, and then that housing will be supported. It's not going to be just a residential neighborhood. Um, it will be supported and surrounded by some non-residential uses. Um, we know that child care is a priority uh, for everyone in the city, uh, ensuring that we continue to have space for artists and makers in this um, district and creating new space um, because it's still quite limited in the South End. And then and sort of the um, educational components, of course, um, as Nick mentioned, it's it's not a you know it's hard to have an innovation district without that education component, and then the services that would support you know the 1,100 new homes, like places to eat and get and get coffee and do your laundry. Um, the next thing, so that conceptual um, program was used to start to look at what, um, how the infrastructure would, the existing infrastructure would respond that we need to be tying into. Um, we know, and anyone that has uh, been in the South End in a severe wet weather event knows that there's some uh, wastewater, stormwater infrastructure constraints in this area. Um, so we've started to understand what the impacts of this development would be on the existing system and what kinds of interventions are going to need to be made uh, for us to be able to, to build. Um, in the pre-development agreement, we'll be digging deeper into what the options are and how the project um, could be phased to best under, you know, understand um, it's one thing to have a model tell you something, but it's a lot better to start um, small and see how that actually in interacts with the system. Um, so it'll be a combination of studying of options and, and phasing to, to, again, continue to iterate on how this will work. 
Um, in addition to the water, we've been looking at um, parking and the car trips um, in and out of the district. We talk about wanting to be car light. It's certainly a goal. And in Vermont, we um, are pretty far away from a car-free um, neighborhood, I think, um, although we will be designing for that to be an, a possibility in the future. Um, so the, the goal is to have a shared parking district to minimize the number of new parking spaces that need to be built. Um, and for those spaces, um, to uh, essentially be able to evolve into non-parking uh, if and when we get to that, to that uh, car-free future. Um, and I think I talked a little bit about the car light neighborhood uh, in the mobility infrastructure, but again, the idea, the concept is to capture cars um, for folks that live and are visiting this district on the edge and um, have the majority of the mobility through the district be on bike or foot um, or through public transportation. So in the, I've um, alluded to some of this, what's in the pre-development agreement is a set of agreed upon design goals. Some of these might um, look basic, and I think uh, John maybe alluded to this a little bit. Um, being in partnership with a municipality, a college, and a private entity is a is hard. It's very hard, and it's taken work. And um, I think we talked about, you know, since the SEID passed, we've been moving towards this pre-development agreement. Um, the reality is, these three parties have been working together for over three years and figuring out how to work together, and and being able to um, come up with a set of agreed upon goals is really, um, it's a pretty big yeah, deal, good. and it's exciting. Um, so uh, it, we felt it was important to to share those, and I think they're you know, these are goals that are reflected in the zoning amendment and I think we think shared um, by many of uh, the residents of the city of Burlington uh, and the existing neighborhood. And then the other um, thing in this pre-development agreement is a set of um, commitments for how we're going to continue to collaborate. I mentioned um, coming up with the housing um, plan. The, uh, there's a shared goal that that plan will have a minimum of 20% of affordable housing as well as mixed tenure um, uh, on the site. We're going to be working on a public realm conceptual design. What is the look and feel of the streets and paths um, that we're designing um, with some support from the state, ACCD. Um, and then we will be working towards um, hopefully a joint um, plan unit development application. So the city, Champlain College, and Ride Your Bike will be joint applicants um, to, for a PUD um, zoning application that goes across all three sites. And this, again, is is the opportunity for us to be working together to get to a new neighborhood um, that is more successful than any of us developing on our own. Um, the additional commitments include um, investigating. If you look at the um, mobility framework, you can see it had intersections in our brand new um, Champlain Parkway. That's going to require collaboration with state and federal partners. Um, the city-owned land has some deed restrictions on part of the land um, that was also part of the Champlain Parkway. We're going to be having to work with um, partners and then continued infrastructure analysis, as I mentioned, particularly around wastewater. So the next steps, uh, we will be coming to council on Monday um, to take, asking council to take action on this pre-development agreement. This is, um, we've been working with council for a while. Um, and then we will be working, we've got um, some meetings that we are working to set up um, later this month and next month to start to bring together um, stakeholders to do this additional study um, with the hope of being able to have a preliminary application for a PUD this summer um, and a complete application by the fall. If we make it through all those steps, um, we are hoping to be able to work towards a development agreement um, by the end of the year that more explicitly commits these parties to working together uh, across our parcels. I think that's it. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Megan for this, for the years of work to get to this point. Um, I think we'd be happy to answer any questions you have uh, about what we're, um, we're doing. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. What's the long-term, you know, everything goes well date that we could see some actual construction? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, um, 
the problem with answering that question, Catherine, is it's really hard to know at, at this stage. You know, we are we and you know, once we put a timeline out there, then anything that doesn't quite meet that becomes a failure. It, it's we are, uh, you know, I. I think we'll have a, a better handle on that um, when we get through the milestones that Samantha just walked through. When we actually, this is, you know, I think it's really important to understand this agreement is essentially an agreement to try to agree. And, and that isn't to diminish it in that you need goals, structure, process to get to an agreement between three parties, especially when one of the parties is the city and involves, you know, uh, a future mayor and, you um, uh, 12, 12 people on the city council and it's got to be an agreement that's going to last over multiple years and you know there'll be other decision makers probably before this is all, all done um, so this is this is an agreement to try to agree when we come back the, a difference between this and what hopefully um, we'll be announcing on you know a timeline like uh, was laid out there maybe a year or so from now is that would then be an agreement with some real um, uh, legal commitments to each other about uh, timelines and and uh, goals that we're, we're trying to hit. So at that point, I think it will then become possible to start putting uh, putting um, you know, putting dates on, on when you'll actually see, see houses being built here. The only thing that is different than that, are you, is there, at one point, maybe I'm, maybe I haven't kept up with all the details of this, but there was the possibility of some early construction, I know, on your parcel. Is that still something that is being considered or... Yeah, um, that uh, I think in general, I mean, I, I agree with everything you've said, um, you know, that from our perspective, we're going to try to move as quickly as reasonably possible. There's a lot of externalities, things that we don't have control of that you've kind of just you know identified. And so, you know, I think part of this agreement is to try to limit those externalities, doing so reduce risk and shorten up the timeline. Um, yeah, we would like to get at least the first phase, you know, and I think the, the the permitting process, as I understand it, can allow for a balance of having a, a conceptual framework that could set upper limits to a total of number of dwelling units, so much uh, gross square footage of non-residential space, so many parking spaces, so many, tr you know, and on and on and on, that. I think that and a, and a mobility framework, a road system, um, that's something that the Development Review Board can agree upon. And perhaps on a phased basis, you would then come back with detailed plans for phase one or phase two or phase three. So, you know, one option would be you go in to get that initial approval. And as part of the initial approval, you have also plans for that phase one. When that would happen again is it's as soon as reasonably possible, but we know it's not going to be until you know, two thousand first or second second quarter of two thousand twenty-five. And my other question for private partners: You have the new mayor coming in. Um, how do you intend to work with the new mayor to say that this is something that should be here in the south end? Well, I mean, I think that. Um, I, the community has just gone through a really robust public process about around creating this South End Innovation District, and I mean this is something that's been, you know, a a, a goal for for a long time. Moreau still has scars, you know. I mean it's you know back to 2014, but so it's in, more recently. I think the 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 community has has embraced it, and I th think the unanimous support of the City Council of the, the, the mayor alluded to, um, you know, is you know, a testament to that. Um, so, I mean, I, we look forward to, to working with Emma and, and um, you know, I've, I've, I've met with her and, and, and listened to her and, and she seems, you know, excited about the prospect. And, and I think the, the, the fact that we need more housing is sort of beyond debate. Okay, if great, one, first, one go ahead. Thing. Just, um, is there anything planned more imminently for the Hula property or, um, you know, I'm just noticing that that's been redesigned as well. No. no nothing yet. Mm -hmm. No, and no plans for anything, really. 
We have our hands full over here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. So um, are, are, are people interested in walking the, the site a little bit? Great. So let's do that. Let's do it. That speaks to one of the possible outcomes from this period, too, is everyone has parking needs. And this is really one of the areas where, you know, a couple times you've heard this idea that the, the you know, the total may be more than the sum of its parts. That parking is really a, uh, an area where that can be the case because different uses have different parking needs at different times of the day. And if there's some kind of shared parking facility, multi-purpose park, parking facility that's shared by the different entities, that can be a lot more efficient than everyone having to build their own. So we'll keep walking now towards the city parcel. Okay. 